Hello everyone, welcome to Researching the Future session at Singularity 2020. I'm so excited to be here today participating in this event and have the opportunity to do this session because we are prepared a really cool presentation for you covering different technologies and projects and we are going to have uh, some collaboration from some member of the team as well so it's going to be really really cool. My name is Javier Canton. I work as research lead at Plain Concepts and the idea today is share with you more info about what kind of things we are doing in this team. Okay, so let's start. As research team, our firm mission is to help companies to incorporate the latest technology advances to their process. And to achieve this, we are focused on 3D graphics, augmented reality, virtual reality, uh, artificial intelligence, and special understanding technologies. And today we are going to see how we are using all these technologies in different projects. But okay, people said that an image is always better than a thousand words. So we are prepared for you a really cool video first. So take a look. Awesome, right? Yeah, uh, the video is super cool. Don't worry about if some of this image looks a little bit weird because we are about to share with you more information about all these projects. But before this, I would like to start from talking about uh, how this thing started. And this was 10 years ago when we started creating a new graphic technology uh, to use internally and to share with our customer and working with company from the industrial sector, we find out that they need a new 3D graphic technology to be able to create 3D viewer uh, for data visualization, uh, integrate this in their current or legacy projects. And they also need to create, uh, they also need to be able to load files from specific softwares like uh, Katia, SolidWorks or Revit. Uh, there, are, there are other 3D graphic technology focused on game sector, but uh, there weren't any uh, 3D graphic technology focused on industrial sectors like manufacturing, architecture, engineering, uh, aerospace or healthcare. So we decide to, to do something here and we call this new technology Wave Engine. After uh, 32 releases, uh, we have just released Wave Engine 
and this is an overview of this analogy uh, on the bottom part you will find out uh, the latest event from company like Microsoft in .NET 5 uh, we are using actually .NET 5 in uh, all platform it is possible right now and C Sharp 9 and where uh, on those, for those platforms where it is not possible we are using mono but next year with .NET 6 we hope to use only uh, one runtime and one compiler for all our uh, support platform uh, on top of this uh, you you will see the most popular uh, 3D low level graphic APIs from companies like Microsoft with DirectX 12 or Kronos Groove with Vulkan or from Apple with Meta. Uh, in Wave Engine 3.1 we have a low level abstraction graphic API so that allows us to run application uh, or the same application in different operation system uh, using uh, different 3D uh, low level graphic APIs. Okay. On the top part of this diagram, uh, you will see uh, all our support platform, uh, Windows, Linux, Mac, iOS, Android, and web platform. And in the middle part, between Wave Engine and platform, you will see uh, several uh, user interface technology. This is one of the most important things for a customer because they are normally, for example, in Windows platform, they are using Windows uh, WBA. Uh, WPF, Windows Presentation Foundation, or they are using Windows Form to create their application. Um, we designed Wave Engine to make it easy to integrate Wave Engine and 3D Graphic in all these uh, user interface technologies. Okay, and in the right part, uh, you will see a web platform. This is something really new. Uh, and this was like a dream two year, uh, three years ago. But now, this is possible with, with the latest event in .NET 5 uh, with a new compiler called uh, .NET Wasm and the member of the team who started creating this new adapter uh, was Marcos Covenia and to have, today we have the opportunity to connect with him now and uh, to know more about uh, how this technology works and he is going to tell us more about some project we are doing with this technology, for example, one called Pavia, uh, that we have the opportunity to collaborate with Microsoft uh, Seattle to, to, to be able to, to, to do that. So, Marco, uh, tell us more about this. Hi, Javi. How are you doing? So, yes, um, as you have said, we have been working with Microsoft on this uh, game, if we can call it a game, because it's quite small in the in the in the idea or in, it, in its logic but there is a lot of technology involved in the in the in the underneath um, basically it is an AI player working with you on solving a specific uh, issue which is going through a door then you have to push some buttons and it is something you need to make uh, between two uh, you the player and the AI um, and it is quite interesting because uh, we have been investing in, in Web Engine uh, to move it to the web and, and, and this game is one of our first public products being made with, with this version, this version of, of Wave. Um, let me change, yes. Um, and basically there are two pieces running in the, in the browser, as, as you will see now. It is one thing running JavaScript, which is uh, the, the ONNX uh, engine. Uh, it takes a neural network being trained within a desktop computer and <coughs> it is inferring uh, movements uh, along with the website inside the browser running entirely in JavaScript. And this is something we haven't touched. I mean, uh, Microsoft already provide this JavaScript engine, and we have been uh, just uh, importing it and, and using it. And also, there is a WebAssembly or WASM app running uh, together with it, which is uh, actually uh, running .NET 5 inside. So we have JavaScript and .NET 5 working together, one with each other. Um, from .NET, we are consuming the JavaScript and network, 
and when the JavaScript no longer has a, a result, it's calling .NET 5 to provide the, the, the next movement to so the AI can, can move along with you. Um, let me show you the game running in the browser. I will, I will show you the URL later on. Okay, so if we click and play the game, it is being loaded within the website. It is actually an iframe. And as you can see, there is a white player, which is the one we can move, and the blue one, which is the EI. I have to move along this blue switch, and also this white one. And when everything is being pressed, and the other player is being pressed in the, the red one, the doors open and it can go through it to, to just uh, end the game. It is interesting because I can, I can make the opposite. I mean, I can decide that I want to go to the red one. So the AI notice this and she goes along to the other two buttons uh, having the same result. Uh, uh, even further, uh, I can decide I want to switch from the red one to one of the yellow or blue or the other way around. And the AI also notices this and she goes and uh, collaborate to, 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 uh, to get the target of the game. So um, one interesting thing is that we have been working with Boyo Banjay, as Javi uh, probably has already said, something like 10 years. Um, it has been running on, on, on most of the desktop options, Windows, Mac OS, Linux, mobile devices, tablets, smartphones, uh, headsets, AR, uh, VR, HoloLens. Uh, but going to the web has been a, 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 a large target we have had since a few years ago because it was not possible, it was not feasible, uh, the, the, the performance was not good enough to move 3D stuff in the browser and since the, the, the beginning of .NET 5 and well, it, it betas where we have option to, to room .NET code within the browser. We we open the window to, to move a web engine to the to the to the web. Um, it has been quite interesting because uh, it has opened a lot of uh, doors for us. Uh, so we can move our our existing projects to the web uh, with not so much effort, um, and also we can share our knowledge with. Uh, OpenGL because because it is one of our rendering engines, uh, also for the web because we are currently consuming WebGL. <coughs> WebGL is the de facto standard today in the web nowadays, um, but um, it is supported on more, most of the modern browsers, including mobile devices, tablets, and so on, iPads, etc. Um, but WebGPU is, is, is uh, we think it is the future, and we are already working on an effort to move Wave Engine through this direction. Um, it is not currently been stable, but uh, we think it will be in the following months. Uh, so we will switch to it when it is ready, and it opens up a lot of opportunities because the neural network that you have seen it is running in JavaScript, uh, uh, we will be able to move it to the compute shaders which is also running in the GPU. So everything is running on .NET and taking the most of the performance of the browser, almost native performance uh, uh, within the, the, the same .NET sandbox. Uh, if you want to play the game or know a lot, the more, a lot more of it or how it is being made underneath, uh, here you have the URL. Um, I think it's all. Um, Javi, maybe could you tell us a little bit more of uh, on WebGPU? Thanks. Sure, Marcos. Uh, WebGPU is the new 3D graphics standard for web platform. It's going to be support for the most popular uh, browser in the market. So, uh, and also give us uh, the opportunity to use new features compared with uh, what we have right now with uh, WebGL because WebGL is based on uh, all the version of OpenGL and use OpenGL for all platform. Uh, on the other hand, WebGPU is going to use DirectX 12 in Windows, uh, Vulkan in Linux and Metal in, in iOS. So uh, we will have access to features like Compute Shader and all the new features that we have uh, in all these platforms or with all these APIs. 
new APIs, so it's going to be really, really cool. But now we are going to connect with uh, Manuel Gomar, who is going to show us more projects where we are using this technology. Okay, Manu, go ahead. Hello, Javier. It's been a whole year, but we can finally announce that Wave Engine is ready for the web. This is possible because we are using the latest C Sharp release that enable us to compile directly to WebGL. And for even a greater performance, we can use techniques like ahead of compilation. Why is it important to bring this technology to the web? Because you don't need to install it, it's just one click and runs on your computer, mobile phone, or tablet. This opens a new door for using this technology with our client web needs. For example, we can integrate this technology onto their current platforms and increase the value of the product. One example of what this technology can achieve are interactive visors. Let's take a look. As you can see here, this is an integra integrated visor on the web and it's not just a photo. You can interact with this 3D model of an old flying helmet. We can rotate it to see every of the details of this helmet and get getting zoom in and see all these features. Okay. Another example for another example is this uh, electric panel. Uh, we can load uh, the model that the client needs to make the to meet their requirements and this is our pet. As you can see, it's a really quite handy visor, and we can show the the model of the of whatever model. Okay, and now, for example, this is a CAD visor. As you can see, this is the the city of Amsterdam. Okay, it's a really big model, and it runs quite smoothly. We can get close. A close look into every of the details or even change the perspective you can have a proper view of all the all the roads all the trains another example is the city of Venice or even Florence these are examples of what a CAD viewer can, can do these are, are really huge models and and we can meet all the requirements. And for example, the last example, if this this is the <laughs> the office in, in Madrid, the first floor, we have made this <laughs> this uh, jelly cubes. So, um, we can spawn it wherever we want and interact with them, make it bigger, even rotate them. And we have this interactive button, so. Uh, these are just examples of what this technology can achieve, uh, and I hope you like it. Cool, isn't it? It is, Manu. And it's really interesting to see all the uh, cat viewer working on browser. And it's just the beginning because we just created the new adapter for web platform uh, this year. But uh, I think that we are going to have a lot of work uh, creating new 3D viewer uh, on what platform for different projects. Okay, and now we are going to, to connect with uh, Javier Carnero, one of the engineers uh, working uh, with artificial intelligence uh, in the team, who is going to tell us more about an interesting project called Virtual State. Javier, tell us more. Thank you, Javi. Uh, yes, indeed, the virtual stage project was developed at the, for the Microsoft Build 2020 this year. The main idea was to, to be able to record the speakers from their homes, like if they were in a professional studio, and then uh, be able to extract them, let's say, in order to, to put them into a virtual stages or, or virtual environments uh, to, to show their presentations in the, in the event. In this slide, uh, you can see some samples of what we actually presented at the event. And you can see that we are um, achieving great accuracy in usually complex zones like uh, around the hair, th thorns around the hair or around the hands. Uh, this is all using AA models. And um, I want to show you today how you can use it and how it works. 
So to do that, I uh, record myself a, a small video today at my home. At the left, uh, you can see myself at the living room. Uh, you can see that I'm not using any special setup for this environment, uh, just uh, a little space between my furniture. Uh, and at the right, uh, you can see my actual recording setup. First of all, I'm using the ambient light. Uh, this is totally optional. This is because uh, in my living room, I don't have much sunlight. So I use it in order to avoid some some noise effect on the, on the camera. Then I'm also using obviously a camera. In this case, we're using a Shurky Net. This is because we are not only using the color information, but also the depth information. I'll talk a, a little bit about that later. And uh, I'm, use, I'm also using a laptop in order to record everything. To help the speakers to, to do the recordings, uh, we build this application. It's called the Speaker Recorder app, in which uh, a speaker can see himself. Uh, in this case, uh, you can see David Carmona recording at, at his home. And at the right, uh, as a speaker, you can see your the color information, the, the camera information, the depth information, and also the slides that uh, you are actually presenting. After the, the recording has finished, you have two options. You can upload everything to the cloud, so plain concepts can process it uh, for you, or you can do it yourself uh, locally, let's say. To do that, we build this command line tool that, um, that runs all the process for you. Uh, at the left, you can see the input, and at the right, you can see the, the outputs. Actually, the output is in the middle. is this uh, black and white image that you can later use with uh, usual, usual post-production software, like, for example, Adobe Premiere, in order to create the image on, on the right or um, merging with different uh, virtual assets or virtual environments to create uh, image like the, the one at the top. All this is uh, open source and is published in, in GitHub. Uh, you can see this uh, the link I left you below, in which uh, you you can you have much more information and also the, the links to the to the source code. So, but uh, this work comes from from a research project uh, that is, was published on April eighteenth this year, and uh, it was originally published by the University of Washington. I want to show you here, I'm not going to enter into much detail, but I want to show you that the, one of the novelties or the main, for me, interesting uh, thing that they did is that they're using two different training steps for, for creating the models. Uh, first of all, they use this, uh, this supervised training step using a synthetic data set. And from that point, they uh, use uh, another strategy using self, uh, self-supervised or unsupervised strategy using generative adversarial network. It's very interesting. So what we did in top of that to, to create this professional software uh, th that we could use um, in, in this event and, and the others that came later. So first of all, as I said, we are using Azure uh, cameras. Uh, this is because uh, using the depth information, apart from the color information, uh, we can have much more accuracy at the beginning of the process. Uh, this is uh, use, leveraging the AI models that uh, Azure uh, provide us in order to uh, segmentate the body parts. Apart from that, um, we extend the research in order to support full body images. Uh, the original work only only works uh, with uh, recordings above the knee, so we use these uh, different techniques in order to 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 support full body or full standing uh, persons. Apart from that, uh, we re-implemented everything so we could have this uh, horizontal scaling and we could have this uh, we, we could have everything automated on the cloud so right now we are able to uh, escalate the processing of a video in order to um, uh, decrease the processing time without increasing the the price which is uh, very nice for us so uh, I hope you, you found it interesting, and yeah, I, I let you back with uh, Javi Canton. Thank you. Thanks, Javier. 
It is interesting to see how uh, the technology can allow us to continue doing international events, keeping the speaker safe using this kind of technology. But we can continue. Uh, now we are going to connect with Sergio Calada, uh, who is going to talk about uh, how we can mix this uh, wave engine in web platform and virtual state for a future technology. And now uh, where we are using this kind of technology in a new concept uh, that we call uh, interactive video spinning. Okay, Sergio, continue. Thank you, Javier. Hi, everyone. I just want to spend with you a few minutes talking about a complete new concept, interactive videos. This is one of our latest technologies and we have created this technology using our own graphics engine called Wave Engine. A year ago, Wave Engine could be run on Microsoft HoloLens, on mobile devices, on desktop, but not inside a web browser. So during the last year, we have been working on make that possible. Once we had Wave Engine running inside a web browser, a whole universe of possibilities uh, opened all, uh, before our eyes. So we had a lot of ideas and one of them was to mix. HTML videos with 3D models. In times of pandemic, like the one that we are living in, I think that this technology works great. It was great because uh, it perfectly fits with all those live events that due to the COVID-19 situation have become online events. This kind of interactive experiences uh, helps the spectators to, to stay focused in the, in the presentation itself and they can have fun while listening to all the amazing things that the speakers want to, to share with, with them. But better than speaking, I think that we can see a, a real example. This one is available in the, in the Microsoft Innovation website. It is public. You can play with, with it if you want. Uh, it was created for the Microsoft Ignite event this year. And here in the bottom you can see uh, four marks indicating uh, when the, the 3D experiences are going to be to be loaded. So we have four of them in this presentation. Uh, we also have with our technology the possibility to, to create HTML elements like this panel here the, that will help to reinforce some presentation concepts or even to give some instructions to the users um, to interact with those 3D, 3D models. I'm going to press the, the play button and here Mitra he is going to introduce the, the appearance of a 3D robot in this scenario. Here you can move the, the 3D robot over the scenario and if we press this yellow button the side panel changes. It loads, loads a, a, a micro game, a micro game that you can uh, play with while the presentation is going on. Uh, as I said, we have four uh, experiences here, but I want to, to sh also show this, this last one because it is very interesting because uh, this bunch of mosquitoes has been generated using the particle system of, of Wave Engine. And if you lure these mosquitoes to the to this trap, uh, in a given moment, this side panel is going to to change and load another ex complete uh, different experience. Uh, in this case, is a is a 360 panorama inside a laboratory, and you can move around. Uh, another gr great thing of this technology is that in at any moment you can go back or, or forward just to relieve the, the experiences. For example, I want to relieve the, the robot experience. Just go back and relieve it with any, without any problem. You can also use the full screen mode of your browser and still being able to play with those experiences. And uh, another good news is that you can reach your customers uh, all your customers with, with this technology because as it is um, web browser based, you can reach 
uh, users in Windows, in Android, in Mac or iOS. But seeing that, uh, you can think, okay, what is what comes next? What is the the future of this? I'm going to to show you another example here, as we have a lot of bricks and we can combine those bricks. We are combining uh, our virtual stage technology with this interactive video technology. So if I place the, the play button, I can play with the with the robot and I can pass the robot behind the speaker. This is because the speaker is another 3D element inside this virtual environment. Uh, other things that we can include in the future, we can include here the, the presentation, the PowerPoint presentation itself. And for example, you as, as a spectator, you can configure or customize the, the font size. Or for example, imagine that you have a, here a selector and you can even change from a virtual scenario to another one. I don't know, imagine you can um, see the presentation inside a cinema or inside a theater or maybe inside a basketball arena. I have no doubts that, that we are going to have a lot of fun with this technology. Uh, do you like it? I hope so. And uh, now just we are going to return the communication with, with Javier and let's see what else he has to, to tell us. Thanks, Sergio. Nice work. It's an interesting concept because uh, right now, sometimes it's really difficult to keep the attention of user in only one screen. But if you have the opportunity to interact with this screen, uh, it is possible. And right now, uh, create this new concept about interactive video and add extra information and also sometimes make it easy for some people to see or follow uh, a specific presentation making the font site uh, bigger or something like that uh, should be really interesting okay and now we are going to change a little bit to talk about a future technology called holoportation and uh, it is an interesting project created in Microsoft Research in Seattle. And this last year, we have the opportunity to collaborate with them in new things. So uh, who is going to tell us more about this is David Davila. Thank you, Javier. Uh, let's talk about our works in the holoportation area. Holoportation is the combination of hologram and teleportation. Holoportation allows you to see, hear, and interact with remote participants in a 3D environment uh, as if they were uh, actually present in the same uh, physical space. In 2016, uh, Microsoft Research uh, published its first version of this technology. Uh, it used a set of cameras with 3D scan the participant allowing to reconstruct a virtual model which could be presented in mixed reality devices, uh, HoloLens in that case. So inspired uh, by that work, uh, we started to develop our own proof of concept in the same year, in 2016, using Wave Engine or own Graphic Engine. And here are the, the first results. You can see our coworker being teleported and presented on a HoloLens device. In that case, we use a single Kinect camera. You can see on the left of the of the video. Uh, this is the Kinect version two. Uh, Kinect uh, really is really useful because uh, provides us color and depth information, helping us uh, to 3D scan the participants. As you can see, uh, using a single camera has some sort of limitations. This is because uh, the 3D model can only be uh, reconstructed for one side. So you will notice several holes and gut and artifacts. Uh, to solve that, uh, we need to put uh, to capture the user from several point of views. Uh, however, uh, it allowed us uh, to become familiar with this kind of technology. Later uh, this year, on February, uh, we had the incredible opportunity to collaborate with Microsoft Research and the original uh, Holoportation team. 
uh, as a result, uh, we reach uh, the milestone to perform the first holoportation session through internet on a live event on Microsoft Ready. This is an internal event of Microsoft uh, this year. Uh, and here are the results. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we cannot show you videos of this event because it was an internal event. Uh, however, we can show you some internal tests. Uh, you will notice several improvements on the on the model. Uh, you, you there are the, a complete model with uh, with no gaps, uh, with no artifacts, a, a full volume. Uh, we worked hard optimizing the the network bandwidth and latency to properly render the hologram on a real time session. Okay. And one last one last thing that I like to show you is uh, our camera tracking system. We developed a, techno a technology that allows to insert real time holograms in a camera video feed, making it suitable for live events. For us, it was important that the system was portable and easy to calibrate. Uh, we supported several scenarios. In that case, we have a professional camera with, an with, with a steady cam, uh, providing a professional result. Uh, in the other hand, uh, we port that system to mobile devices, uh, iOS and Android, uh, using uh, augmented reality to insert holograms. Uh, we have proven that technology on live events with successful results. For example, this was the on the Microsoft Ignite last year. It was really cool. Or the Telefonica keynote last uh, Mobile World Congress in 2016. This is the uh, speech of uh, Chema Alonso, and it was really useful uh, to put holograms uh, to enhance the presentation. And that's all. I hope you found it very interesting. And um, I let you back with Javier Cantón. Uh, thank you very much. Thanks, David. Yeah, it is interesting because you maybe think about this uh, future technology, but no, it is possible right now to teleport your 3D representation from one city to another city in real time. It's really cool. And also the other technology that you show us uh, about the custom uh, tracking system, because if we can add uh, batteries to this uh, tracking system and convert this in a portable tracking system and use this in the middle of the forest. That is really cool too. Okay, and now we are going to uh, connect with Jorge Canton, one of the engineers working in the core of Web Thinking to see what is the latest advance in 3D graphics in our new version, Web Thinking 3.1. Hi everyone, we are going to be taking a quick look at post-processing inside Web Engine 3. Now, for those of you unfamiliar with post-processing, it is essentially the process to apply effect after the production of your image or your scene. For example, take a look at this image on the screen. The left side is the raw, I mean the, the original image. However, the right is uh, where I apply I fed so uh, it's looked a little bit different. Okay, in Web Engine 3, we are working with the latest technology to create the new post processing system. The system is based on Compute Shader. Compute Shader is something like that. It's a piece of code that will run on GPU to ensure a great performance. Uh, but if you want to create a post processing pilot completely, you need to, to use several effects, so um, we created a graph that is a post-processing graph. The input of the post-processing graph is the result of render or geometry of your scene 
and next we have different effects here compute shaders and finally the output is a new image with all effects applied on top okay wave engine 3 come with the most important effects using real time where we have a look uh, got uh, some of them okay we're going to be on run okay, here that is the singularity virtual state demo okay first I need to remove all effects uh, okay the first effect is screen space ambient occlusion the idea behind it is to darken areas surface with other geometry very close by to simulate ambient light okay here okay next effect is a uh, screen space reflection wow screen space reflection is a very interesting technique that use a uh, screen space data to simulate surface uh, or reflective surface such a wet floor or puddles or something like that okay next is depth of field um, if you want that the audience to pay attention to something in particular of your shot, you can define a range or area on your image that is on focus while the ref the image is on soft. For example, the focus is on the window and the singularity bar is soft here. Okay, it's pretty nice. Next is Bloom. Bloom is a effect. Uh, allow us to to highlight bright areas of your, our image and add uh, some um, interesting details such a camera uh, dirty camera lens okay here we can see the dirt of the lens yeah it's pretty nice and finally uh, our last effect is tone mapping and color grading uh, that allow us to um, to map one set of color to another to simulate different ambients such as um, underwater, uh, desert, something like that. Okay, voila! That is the result of our demo. And the most important to bear in mind is Wave Engine 3 comes with a new post-processing graph editor that allow us to create and configure our post-processing pilot for our project so we are exciting to use that in our next project and um, uh, we are getting better results from now on and thank you that for that was all what do you think javi thanks jorge i think that i love to see all these beautiful effects working in real time in wave engine 3.1 and based it on this new tool, uh, Processing Graph, and I think mm, have a tool to to uh, as a graph to edit uh, the pipeline of processing is something really new in this area, so it's really cool. And also have the opportunity to use compute shader instead of pixel shader uh, to get all these effects working uh, in real time. Uh, could be great too because probably for most cases. Uh, you can get better performance. Okay, uh, now we are going to connect with Victor Ferrer, who is going to tell us about a, an interesting project called uh, Electric Panel Experience that we developed for a whole institute. And okay, Victor, tell us more about this. Sophisticated new technologies emerge every year. However, a big challenge is how to integrate these technologies in well established industrial processes. In plain concepts, we really believe in the potential of HoloLens to be a paradigm shift in some existing scenarios. Such a guide employee training using HoloLens in place to improve the learning process. Or hands-free access to blueprints and digital resources without using external devices like tablets or phones. Or the case of remote assistant where HoloLens allows to share field initial real-time view with experts in remote locations. Plain Concepts on its aim to showcase HoloLens potential and its benefits for industrial companies wants to produce a physical and realistic experience 
that brings a closer point of view of the technology directly applied to these existing scenarios. For this, we want to push the envelope and create a portable demonstrator called Electric Maintaining Experience that proves the benefits of mixed reality technology to this field. This demonstrator presents an hypothetical maintenance case where the user is guiding the full process of performing a maintenance task assisted by HoloLens. The panel demonstrator has been made from scratch, leveraging our hardware knowledge to create a full stack solution that uses customized hardware to connect existing industrial communication protocols and devices like SCADA, Canvas, uh, voltage and current meters, etc. with HoloLens using built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connection. The HoloLens application was being made using Mixed Reality Toolkit for Web Engine and is meant to be fully autonomous, as the application is connected with the panel demonstrator and knows about the physical state of the system. So it will guide the user with the speech and holographic instruction to know what step should be done at every moment. During the demo, the user will make several measurements and replace certain elements present on the panel. And the application will register a full log of the steps and take photos of the whole process, providing metrics and evidence of the tasks performed by the technician. This experience has been displayed in several events and we have received very positive FIFA from first systems. In fact, this experience is available in several Microsoft technology centers around the world, so I wish all of you have the opportunity to try that out. But this is only just the beginning. Combining this experience with other mentioned applications like remote assistant and access to digital resources can definitely pose a significant change in the industry. The fourth industrial revolution is here. So the question is, are you ready for it? Now let me turn it back to Javier. I would love to hear his thoughts on this project. Thanks, Victor. Excellent work. For me, uh, Electric Panel Experience is one of my favorite projects that we did last year because we have to design the hardware and write the code for this and also create an application for HoloLens 2 and connect all together. So it was really fun. <laughs> okay, now we have more things to share with you and we are going to connect with Pablo Inigo Blasco, uh, who is going to give us an overview of uh, how we are using spatial understanding technologies. Hello, Javier. The first I have to say is that thank you very much for all the presentations you did today because they are really awesome. Thank you all uh, of you guys for them. I also have something to show to you today. I'd like to talk to the audience about the post estimation issue essentially how we can detect where objects are located in the physical world. I also want to talk about the issue of mapping, how we can create a, a model of the physical world in the memory of the computer, and something else about the, the concept of SLAM, simultaneous localization and mapping. That essentially is the combination of both previous problems. It's a chicken egg problem, that's why they come together. What's the motivation of all this work? Uh, now we are in a new level in augmented reality. We feel like we can do more advanced applications, even more with the rising of robotics. We feel like we need to interact more with the physical world. And now uh, we are interested in the, in the creation of applications where the interaction with the physical world is the key issue. We believe that it's essential to have some intensive knowledge about uh, this field because uh, at the end, final applications usually need to fuse and integrate information from different devices, sensors, algorithms, data models, or technologies, let's say HR special anchors, but in general, you need to know a lot of stuff in the field. Uh, I want uh, today to share some ideas on this field based on the experience we have from some previous projects we did here at Plain Concepts Research. For example, let's start talking about sensors. The most common sensor is the monocular camera. Just with a single camera, we can localize an object if uh, we have some previous knowledge of the shape of that object. 
uh, you are able to detect some key points on that object from the image, even without using using QR markers. For example, in one in one of our projects uh, in the healthcare field, we used reflecting markers to position a CT body scan over a body of a patient. The algorithm we followed here is the PNP algorithm. With a monocular camera, we can do something else, that it is the photogrammetry. We can create incrementally here three world submodels. First, a sparse point of features, point cloud of features, the SFM step, then the, a dense point cloud, the MSV step, and then a final mesh that it's after a tessellation process. For example, in one of our projects, we used drones with cameras to record some building under construction. The output of the system was essentially a photogrammetric model, and we could compare the, the generated point cloud with, the, with a 3D CAD model, and the final output was an estimation of the progress of the construction. This is information is very worthy for many companies. Right now, we have our own pipeline for photogrammetry, and we are integrating different technologies, technologies there. Let's go now to some more advanced sensors and robots. Uh, this October, Microsoft presented an article promoting the idea of integrating Azure Spatial Anchors with the robot operating system. ROS and HoloLens to control robots remotely, to bring robots to some goal position and do some specific task in a factory or at home. It's interesting because we have been working on that idea lately. In fact, in the Microsoft Build 2018, we presented our mobile AI platform that is it's with me today. And uh, it's also known as PGKit. And essentially, it's a uh, a custom mobile robot that is able to navigate autonomously, avoiding obstacles. It can be teleoperated from HoloLens, select, selecting a target goal destination. It has two main sensors, uh, that is the 3D LiDAR, an Auster LiDAR, and a Z-CAM, that it is a stereo camera. We can get two rich point clouds to, to be used in the SLAM algorithm and create uh, an incremental model to detect the obstacles. And then we can create trajectories to avoid uh, these obstacles. Uh, this kind of SLAM algorithms are based in a technique called graph SLAM that it is very important in the SLAM field. In fact, the, the photogrammetry also works on top of that idea, uh, but it is known as the bundle adjustment uh, issue or technique. Something that the spending is talking about one algorithm we are doing to combine information that comes from different sensors, Kinect sensors, and create an integrated voxel grid and later a mesh. Uh, we don't have too much time to talk about uh, something else. Uh, it's all I have to say. One simple idea. We know the sensors. We know the technology. Uh, we know the algorithms. Are you ready to create amazing applications interacting with the physical world? That's all. Thank you very much, Javier. See you later. See you later, Pablo. Uh, we don't have time to, to connect with more members of the team to see more projects. Maybe we have to wait for uh, next year. But uh, we hope you enjoy this session. And we are going to continue working hard to push the limit about what we can do with this kind of technologies. And if you want to be part of this, please contact us uh, as part of the complete research team. Thanks for watching.